Alex, the truth of the matter is you are not qualified to be able to decide on the nuclear foreign policy of your country. Let the smart people do it. I may not be, but I can choose someone who will be. And I certainly know- Who is it? Is it Boris Johnson? It may not be, but it's certainly not you. Hi, welcome to NAS Debate. <laughs> Today we will talk about democracy. What type of government works best? Is it a democratic government or is there something better than democracy? On my left, debating pro-democracy, I've got Alex Dweck. Hi everyone, my name is Alex and I'm going to tell you why democracy is the best option out there to help the most people. Thank you Alex. And on my right, I have Nusair, who is voting against democracy. Hello, everybody. Today, I would like to argue for the unpopular, and I would like to say that democracy is not the best form of government today. Before we start, let me explain to you how this debate is gonna work. Our lovely audience has voted pro or against democracy. At the moment, it is 66% pro-democracy. But at the end of the debate, they will vote again. And let's see who is more convincing. Will it be Alex or will it be Nusair? Now, let the debate begin! Alex, I have a question for you. Do you think my t-shirt is pretty? Yes. Some people say yes. Some people say my t-shirt is ugly. Now imagine if everybody in the world was forced to wear my t-shirt. That would be terrible. People have different tastes. We all agree that diversity of thought and diversity of governance is important. But for some reason, when it comes to democracy, the West, which is where you come from, thinks that it's one size fits all. This is why we need a better form of democracy for more people around the world. So, Nasir, it's easy to say that me, myself, is from the United Kingdom and we have democracy. But actually, my family came from outside the West, all the way to the West, to take part in democracy. Because they realize, like many, many other people listening, that democracy has so many good things about it. That democracy provides safety, it provides comfort, and it provides you with choice. That is why democracy has shown over time that it is the best form of government out there. Great, great point, Alex. You said democracy provides you with safety. Senegal has democracy. Kenya has democracy. The south side of Chicago in America has, demo has democracy. In fact, it is the most democratic government in the world. Yet there is no safety in the south side of Chicago. There is no safety at Compton. There's no safety in some parts in the slums in Kenya. So the, the idea that democracy provides you with safety and opportunity and only democracy does that is wrong. So safety is not just about security on the streets. Safety also is the ability to choose your leader and decide who makes the laws and who decides the direction of the country, right? Some people say, oh, it's the person with the PhD, but that doesn't mean they're gonna make good decisions. And at the end of the day, it's subjective, right? Who is right, who is wrong? So if it's subjective, I wanna be able to have a say in who may make the best decision. And that is something that democracy provides that others do not. And this is exactly why I have a problem with democracy. Alex, you work in a corporation. In the big, big decisions at NAS Academy, do you let the software engineer take the decisions? Do you let the designers take the decisions? Or do you, as chief business officer, take the decisions for others? The idea of democracy is that one vote equals one say is flawed. Because even if everybody deserves a voice, not every voice is equal in value. So there's a big difference between a corporation and a country. When I work at a company, I had the choice to leave the company. But in the world today, if I live in a country, I don't always have a choice to leave that country. My passport may not allow me. I may be stuck there. And so I want to be able to have a say over my leaders. And the leader, if it's not me, then it's going to be subjective. Who is the right person to decide who my leader is? Well, I think I'm the best, not you or not anyone else. Do you think a uneducated person on the street should have a say of the nuclear policy of the United States or the UK. 
I don't think they should have a say. Yes, exactly. Yeah. History has shown that in other countries where there isn't democracy, the person who, who rules the country doesn't know more about nuclear policies. There is no evidence that has shown that that person is better in a better position to make a decision. I'm glad you bring that. I'm glad you bring that point because you are implying that democracy works. Yet we've exported democracy to 30 countries around the world. Kenya, Senegal, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Are they richer? Are they Sweden right now? Has democracy truly lifted the citizens that are watching right now? Or has it only generated conflict over conflict over conflict? Not everybody can live by the standards of your country. Not every democracy is perfect. But the beauty of democracy is that every four or five years, we can change the leader. In every country you mentioned, we have the ability to choose a different leader if it's not working out. In a, in a, situ in a country that doesn't have democracy, we are stuck. And by the way, there are many countries that don't have democracy that are just as badly run as countries with democracies that don't quite work. Yeah! Woo! Great. You mentioned the beautiful thing about democracy is that it changes leaders every four years. That's actually the terrible thing about democracy. The biggest problems in your country, the sewer system in your country, the infrastructure in your country, the nuclear arsenal, the army in your country needs more than four years to fix. It needs 10 years to fix, 15 years to fix. What's happening in America or in democratic countries? Every four years, there's a zigzag. There's a new policy. Heck, you work at a startup. To build a small startup, you need five years. So that's what's great about democracies that have been over time is that they've established ways to have elected leaders change every four years, but have a system under it that lasts much longer. So the people in, in a good democracy, what you have is you have a civil service People who run the day-to-day -day of fixing the sewer or fixing the roads. And then the, the overarching policies are decided by the people who change. So that means you can have both. You can have your cake and eat it as well. Okay, great. So what he, what he is saying that democracy works because we infuse a little bit of dictatorship in it. That's all you're saying. Because some part of the government does not change and people cannot vote to, you're saying that's good. All I'm saying is, Let's make that the whole government. Let's make the smartest 2,000 people in a country choose the direction of the country. Democracy only works when the population is sufficiently educated. And that's not the case in 90% of the yeah. world. So Nassari, this is where you're wrong. You think, or the way you're talking, is that there's only one way for a country to move forward. And that's only decided by the smartest people. But in reality, a way a country moves, a way a country moves forward is a choice if the decision is going to be wrong, if there are going to be mistakes made along the way, I would much rather have a, have a role to play in those decisions than to let someone make mistakes without me having any say. No country has a binary choice. It's not this road is better, this road is worse. It's a zigzag and you learn along the way. I want to play a role in my country's zigzag. Well, actually, Alex, there are some roads that are wrong. Democracy elected Hitler. Hitler came from democracy. Was that a zigzag? Did we zigzag out of it? Yeah, through World War II and 50 million deaths. So who do we blame World War II on? The rise of Hitler. And what do we blame the rise of Hitler on? The democratic government, which enabled populism to exist. So in the case of World War II, that was a very low point for democracy. But let's be clear, democracy did not cause World War II. What happened was, is that the elected leader changed the system. Germany did not the become- democratically elected leader. Germany did not become a democracy anymore. That was the problem. And that's down to, to do, that's to do with the institutions around the democracy. Correct. But in a functioning government where there's smart people that are able to make the decisions, they would say no to Hitler. They would say no to Trump because the average person could tell that there is something wrong with this leader. We should not allow them to manipulate the rest of the population. This is why democracy is dangerous. Every leader comes and promises you a business seat in their plane, but they don't know how to fly a plane. But hang on a second. Let's take that same period of time in the 20th century. Not only did we have Hitler with democracy, but we had Stalin and Stalin was not a democracy. And that led to millions of deaths. So it's all very well saying that democracy gives you death, but actually the alternatives give you death as well. Yes. 
Yes, that's correct. That's correct. Now that we are both on the same page, let us actually have some progress. All I'm saying is that, guys, the rest of the world, let me tell you something that the UK and the British Parliament will never tell you. There is a better form of governance that we can explore together, and it's not dictatorship. We don't like dictatorship. You don't like dictatorship. But not the whole world wants to live by the ideals of one country. So I think let's be clear, democracy is not just something from one country. Over periods of time, many, many countries have adopted democracy and adopted the idea of democracy, which is that people have a say. There can be many different forms of people having a say, but at the end of the day, democracy allows you to have a say in some form. Great idea, but flawed execution. Democracy came from Ath Athens. Athens. Is that Britain, by the way? No, that's not Britain, that's Greece. And you know who actually participated in the democracy? Only the top 1% of the Greeks was actually rich enough to talk about democracy and introduce democracy to the world. So actually, the average Greek citizen was not part of the democracy and that's where it came from. So are you in favor of that form of government? That's all I'm saying. Can we explore that form of governance in which there is democracy, but only at the top? Let's take ancient Greece. Ancient Greece had the perfect system. Now, sire, is ancient Greece alive today? No. Did that system work so well? Well, look, it didn't work because ancient Greece is no longer around. But the democracy that I talk about, that everyone gets a vote, is still around today. Is the Third Reich around? <laughs> is the Third Reich around? It had a democracy in 1920 or whatever that also failed. Countries come and go. That's the reality of it. So Nisar, if we don't have a democracy in the way that I describe, who should run countries? The queen? Your queen? <laughs> so, the way it could potentially work, there are different forms of governance called technocracy, epistocracy, whatever it is. What if, at the point in which you're about to vote, we ask you, we give you a simple test. Do you know what the constitution is? Do you know what a nuclear weapon is? Do you know where Russia is on the map? If you answer these three questions correctly, you get to vote. How about that? It's a modified democracy. So Nassar, I love that you're thinking in such an idealistic way but let's just talk about the reality. The reality is you decide that some people are smarter than others. If you think that, that, that technocrats are the people who should run the country, then you're basically saying that 50, 60% of people who don't have access to that education, don't have access or the money to do these things, do not have a right to participate in that country. So you are being elitist. You're saying that, that running a country is reserved only for people who have access to money. And I don't believe in that. And I think many people here don't believe in that. Great. So Alex, let us live your ideals. Do you let everybody in the company decide on the company? You don't. You don't believe that the collective power is actually smart enough to run the company you're running. You don't believe that. So why do you agree with that for the country? A country and a company is the same. In fact, the number one reason why everybody here is rich or well off is because companies generated the value because they are run very effectively. The way companies are run is more effective than the way governments and the way you want governments to run. I'm not saying in a democracy that everyone votes on every decision. A good democracy elects the leader who then appoints the people to make those decisions. So if I'm a farmer, I can vote for the person who I think can pick the right person to do foreign policy. It doesn't necessarily need to be the farmer. Yeah, and if we look at marginalized groups, right? Well, the beauty of democracy is that it gives a seat at the table. So it's not about making every decision, but it makes sure that minority voices are heard and taken into account in decisions. Woo! Woo! This sounds great in paper, but in execution is different. On paper, we can all agree on everything, but if we look at the data, in India, if you run under the name Gandhi, the last family name Gandhi, you still get tens of millions of votes. People in reality vote based on name, they vote based on feelings, they vote based on lack of information. The truth of the matter is, I would love a farmer to participate, but the farmer has not done their homework to be able to participate. So Nassar, this is why I love democracy, because with Donald Trump, Americans got to have a vote four years later, and look, Donald Trump is no longer in power. So the democracy allows you to, to have checks and balances to combat decisions that may not be the best for the country. Does democracy allow 
uh, the UK to rejoin uh, the European Union? I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Some decisions that are taken by democracy are catastrophic and they lead to death, real serious death. We don't want the crowd and the majority to control the world. We, if you talk about minority rights, what is the minority right? If I live in a city in which 90% of the people are white and I am black, there is no way in hell this city will ever get a, a black uh, uh, mayor. So where are the minority rights in democracy? So Nasir, I think this whole debate has been about democracy is bad, but you're not proposing dictatorship is good. You're avoiding dictatorship and you're saying there's this some magical in-between world uh, that can exist. But the reality is that there are very few, if any, examples of that. So the real choice that people have is do I want a democracy or do I want a dictatorship? And I know that I'd rather have the problems of democracy around what you said, around education, than I would in having a dictatorship. Look, I'm not here to argue for dictatorship. I am here to say that there's a big problem in the system today in which people that have no information or education, they are making decisions that affect your life and my life. And if somebody is about to control my life, they better be educated. They better have done their homework. This is why I go to the best doctor. This is why I wanna live in a country in which the most educated voters get to decide. So Nassara, I think actually what you're saying is democracy is great. We just need more education. And if that is the argument, then democracy wins, which says it is the best system out there and let's work on educating the masses on the important decisions to be made. I think if that's the choice today, then we should be voting for democracy and work together to improve democracy, not trash democracy and come up with something entirely My different. My friends, another idealistic point of view that cannot be executed. What does it mean to educate the population? Do you wanna go and educate 1.4 billion people in India? That'll take years. Do you wanna educate 100 million people in Egypt? That'll take years. It's unrealistic and it's impractical. What I'm proposing is let us decide who the smartest people in a country are and let them lead. And now it's time for the closing statements. Alex. Thanks, Sophia. So everyone who's been watching this debate, there are two sides of this. One is a side of hope and one is a side of just giving up, giving up on the world. And you know what? I'm on the side of hope because democracy has shown over time that in a system, in a world full of imperfection, it is the best system out there. And I also like democracy because even when we get it wrong, we always have a chance to correct it. So if you believe that we have a chance in the future to make things better, then you should vote for democracy. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Alex. Nusayer, closing statement. Guys, imagine buying a phone that has not been updated for 20 years. You would not use that phone. He is not arguing for hope. He is actually the one with the hope. He is taking a system that was designed 200 years ago and he wants you to live with it because he's too lazy to come up with something better. I am not lazy, I am hopeful. I think with the collective people, with the collective power, we can come up with a better form of governance. So that's why you are on the hopeful side and let us fix democracy before we make another mistake. Remember, at the beginning of this debate, we let our audience vote pro or against democracy. The voting was 66% pro-democracy. And we are really curious to see what the result will be right now. Okay, time to vote. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. Is what? It, there's no way this is true. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my God. What's happening here? Oh no. <laughs> the world's changing. That's what's happening. <laughs> a very interesting end result. At the beginning, it was 66% pro-democracy and 34% against democracy. We flipped the switch. It is now 59% against democracy. Ah! Yes! <laughs> democracy works only when the population is sufficiently educated. Good debate. Good debate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys.